What's cracking, guys? Omar Esoff here, sitting down because I'm lazy, talking to you today because I got a cool video on hamstring mobility. This is something that I personally suffered with ever since my back acted up. Every time it locks, what would happen? Upstream, downstream, my hamstrings would get tight, my calves would get even more tight, everything becomes restricted. So, I've had to restore my hamstring mobility. It's something I've had to work on. If you have tight hamstrings, they can really cause a lot of problems for a variety of issues. So, we're gonna get into that today. Hey, Theo, I'm gonna fuck you up. All right, well, we'll just cut that whole thing. You know, but before we get into that, I got a very cool announcement I gotta make. Uh, me and my boy, Greg Knuckles, we co-published a book, two books actually, The Art and Science of Lifting. It's two books that we wrote covering everything we know when it comes to fitness, when it comes to strength, hypertrophy, programming, every single facet that we talk about. They're 200 pages together. Um, we have an over 41% sale. They're currently 29 bucks. I think it's incredible value. So if you're looking to increase your knowledge, if you're looking to get serious about your training, make sure to pick those up. That's at scienceoflifting.com. It's a limited sale. It's gonna end on Monday. So pick those up. If you've already picked them up, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Back now to the video. Let's talk about hamstring mobility, something that's personally important to me once again. Because of my back, it's a little precarious. The hamstrings, if they're super tight, they can inhibit your mobility from a couple different areas. And we talk about hamstring mobilities, keep in mind your body works all together, right? It's not like one isolated area. So if you have tight hips, that's probably going to influence your hamstrings. If you have tight calves, that's probably going to influence your hamstrings. But we're talking about hamstrings in particular. Anyways, having tight hamstrings can contribute to a butt wink. That's when you, know, you have extra or excessive lumbar flexion when you're squatting. Uh, when it comes to the deadlift for a lot of individuals, they can't get into that proper position. So once again, their lower back might round or they get into suboptimal position of pull. So having strong hamstrings, having mobile hamstrings that are able to properly be utilized are very important when it comes to the deadlift, very important when it comes to the squat. We want to increase their mobility. Remember, we want the hips to be mobile, we want the spine to be stable. So let's talk about the hamstrings themselves. They're a very tricky area. The traditional test that people would do is touch your toes, right? Oh, touch your toes, let me see my hamstring flexibility. But you know, you're rounding over with your spine, you might be leaning too far forward. It's not the best predictor and it really can be skewed. If you bend over with your spine, oh, Oh, look at my extra hamstring mobility sucker that ain't no hamstring mobility you just bent over so the test I like to do Percy is lying flat on the ground you grab a band and you just pull your leg up until you notice the resistance level until you encounter some sort of resistance as you're pulling up that's your rough approximation of your mobility what we want now just to make sure that we could squat correctly deadlift correctly be safe about our training we want to make sure we can roughly achieve a 90 degree angle if we got that 90 degree angle we're all good don't worry about it you're fine if we don't have like me right now this is me post uh, again my back a little banged up you'll notice i have some limitations so we're going to do a variety of different things this is the sequence that i personally like to do that i've found has helped me out here's what you need to do the first thing I like to do is find any tight spots with some self myofascial release. You know, a foam roller is too big to be used when it comes to uh, finding your hamstrings, I find. It's too general of an area. What I personally like to do is get with a lacrosse ball, tennis ball, lacrosse ball is probably better, is get right into the hamstring, put it underneath my actual leg, and then compress it. Feel that pressure, find those little knots, right? Those tight inhibited areas. And what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna extend my leg. I'm gonna fully extend all the way back and forth. So a little bit of knee flexion, a little bit of knee extension. I'm gonna find those tight knots, tight areas. They're probably gonna be around uh, where your hamstring and your glute meet. So upper hamstring, and then probably also what you can do, you could take with the ball and you could put it at the bottom of the hamstring and you could crunch it, kind of doing a little bit of knee flexion with the top of the calf and see if you feel some relief in that area. So the next one, once again, you wanna simulate what you actually are gonna be doing. So what we're gonna set up here, we're gonna set up a band and we're gonna get kind of with that hip hinge. A lot of times people, when they don't have that hamstring mobility, rather than do a hip hinge on the deadlift, they'll tilt their pelvis and that's really bad on their back. So you wanna put it all the way up into your crotch, move your dick over to the other side. And what you wanna do is you wanna push your hips back until you feel that tension. I personally like to have the lead leg, the leg that's being stretched forward I feel that in my hamstrings you want to have a relatively straight leg and you want to bend forward it's fine if your spine uh, is rounded if you know you're moving forward and that's how you feel stretch just feel it in the best possible area find the spot where you feel it right in your hamstrings and really get up in there until you feel that tension hold that for a little bit you also could move around it's a dynamic stretch it's not just a static stretch where you're holding the same position you can move a little bit to the left a little bit to the right you could crawl forward with your hands just to make sure that you try and find that spot where you feel that tension and then you feel once again that release so both sides make sure you get into a spot where you feel your hamstrings not your calves so try and strain the legs lean forward and get right up in there 
The next one's a static stretch. Uh, in general, when it comes to static stretching, unless you do it for a long period of time and you're very consistent uh, with it, I don't find it's gonna offer an immediate result for any individual. I like to incorporate it, however, just to assess my range of motion once again, work through those tight spots, and just see really how tight I am. So what you wanna do is make sure when you're stretching it with the band, as you straighten the leg, you keep the other leg flat on the ground, you make sure you're trying to pull it back. You make sure you're not feeling it with your calves. If you're feeling it more in your calves, it's probably your ankle position. So make sure your uh, you know, ankles aren't pointed too high or too low. Make sure you're pulling back, feeling it right in the hamstrings, and you want to hold it in that position. Hold it for around 30 seconds. Once again, this is also, it's not just a static stretch, but it's to see so far after doing two movements what your mobility now is like. Now, taking once again a cue from weightlifters, this is a cool stretch that I saw and I started incorporating, and this has produced results. Simulating the movements you're actually gonna be doing so it has some carryover. What you're basically gonna do is with your feet pointed up, elevated by having some plates, you're gonna pick a weight or just use a barbell and you're gonna get into essentially a stiff leg deadlift position and you're gonna hold that static stretch with a load. So first you start with the barbell. I did this the first couple of times I did this to try and increase my mobility. I wasn't training my hamstrings on that day, but holy shit, my hamstrings were jacked up. They were super sore the next day just from doing this stretch. So by essentially pointing your toes up, it allows you to get a deeper stretch with your hamstrings. By doing it loaded, it allows you to get a little bit lower. Think that weight's pulling your body down. Make sure you have a neutral spine, so you're just keeping a neutral back position. You're hinging with the hips. I say that, and I'll make a video on this. Once again, I talk about that, but essentially, you wanna make sure you're pushing back with the hips, you're not extending with the spine. So in order to get that range of motion, you're not overextending or hyperextending uh, with your spine. Instead, you're just putting back or sitting back with your hips. The last one, once again, taking a cue from weightlifters because they need to have more hamstring flexibility than you think for both their clean, for their snatch, is just seeing uh, your flexibility and doing a dynamic stretch with the hamstring. So basically, you put the bar uh, right in your hip uh, itself, right in that joint, and what you're gonna do, pushing back, sitting back, you're gonna squat down, but after you squat down, you're gonna try and extend, push back with your hips, and sit up while keeping the bar inside that pocket, inside that hip position. Don't let it come out. Without your hands, you should be able to extend your hamstrings, sit back essentially into, let's say, uh, almost a, a, a snatch position where you'd be standing up with it like a deadlift. But this allows you just to see, as you're going through the range of motion, what's the actual range of motion of your hamstrings. How do they feel when you extend your leg, uh, when you extend your knee. So doing this up and down just to make sure everything is good, making sure that you can get into the proper positions. And you know, it might feel unnatural at first, but now once I do this, once I do the sequence, once I do this final exercise, I feel, you know, oh yeah, yeah, my hamstrings are feeling pretty good. I'm able to hinge back, things feel all right. That's the final movement then for the sequence itself. Look, I ain't gonna tell you no lies. I'm not trying to say, oh, do these, you know, do the sequence, do these five different movements, and immediately you're gonna notice improvement. I'm saying that if you have jacked up hamstrings, something that I suffered from, uh, doing this sequence and working on this can definitely improve it. Let me know in the comments section below if it does indeed help you out. You just need to be consistent with this. Just think, you're sitting around all day for a long period of time. Doing it once is not gonna make a huge difference. Doing it a couple times, however, a week, and you do that for several weeks, you should notice some improvement when it comes to your hamstring mobility. We wanna be mobile enough in order to perform the movements we wanna do, and we wanna be safe. If you like this video, make sure to like this video. Thanks for watching. Also, if you wanna increase your knowledge, which you should, you should pick up that art and science of lifting at scienceoflifting.com. Thanks so much. I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.